Okay, Roundup and GMO crops. What is glyphosate? People know what Roundup is. Uh, people more and more are learning what glyphosate is, and that is the active ingredient in Roundup. It is used extensively on the food crops. Of, uh, people know about the GMO Roundup Ready crops, where you can just spray the, the to toxic chemical all over the crop. Normally, glyphosate kills all plants, but these plants have been engineered to resist it through an insertion of a bacterial gene. And these include things like corn, soy, canola, sugar beets, cotton, tobacco, and alfalfa. Many of these are core uh, foods of the processed food industry. But people aren't as aware that glyphosate is also used as a desiccant right before harvest on a number of other crops that are not GMO crops. So when you see the label non-GMO, it's not good enough. Um, and this includes um, some basic foods, also wheat and oats and barley and rye, sugarcane, all the leg legumes, beans, lentils, peas, uh, sunflowers, pulses, chickpeas. So all of these uh, foods are going to be, if they've been sprayed with glyphosate right before harvest, the, the highest levels of glyphosate are showing up in these foods even more than in the, in the GMO foods. So glyphosate is now the number one herbicide in use in the United States, and it's increasingly being used around the world. It was originally developed and patented by Monsanto as an herbicide in the 19, actually in 1969, Monsanto patented it as an herbicide and it was introduced into the food chain in 1974. Uh, came out from under patent in 2000. And after that, of course, China started making, there was a lot of growth in uh, use around the world because the price went down. Um, it's, it's mechanism of, of, um, of action is to inhibit a, an enzyme in the shikimate pathway. It's a biological pathway that's crucial in plants, uh, but it's not present in human cells. And this is the argument that Monsanto uses to say that it's, we're quite protected from it. Um, however, the shikimate pathway is widespread in our gut microbiome, and they use it to produce essential nutrients that we can't make, in particular, the uh, aromatic amino acids. Those are essential because our cells can't synthesize those uh, proteins, those amino acids. Uh, and our gut microbes provide us with them through the shikimate pathway. And there was a huge expansion of GMO corn, soy, cotton, and canola crops starting around 1990, late, late 1990s. And that has led to a sharp increase in the use of glyphosate over the past decade. So is glyphosate non-toxic? I said, Monsanto argues it is harmless to humans because we don't have that chicken-mate pathway. But our gut microbes do have the pathway and they use it to make these essential amino acids and also many other precursors to many other nutrients and, and biologically active molecules that are very important to our health. Also, other ingredients in Roundup greatly increased its toxic effects, and it was only tested in isolation in the, in the experiments that led to its approval. Um, it, its effects are insidious and slow, and this is a situation where it takes a long time for you to notice that glyphosate is poisoning you, and they have designed the studies to be too short, I think, to detect damage. Uh, recently, there have been three successful lawsuits uh, claiming a relationship between glyphosate and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And I think that has really been kind of a breakthrough that has made uh, a great uh, increase in public awareness of the possibility of glyphosate not being so safe for humans. So why didn't we find this out a long time ago? It's interesting that the industry defined the rules for how they could uh, get past the regu regulatory requirements. And they said that you, you only had to, well, they only tested the chemical in isolation, whereas they use it in combination with these adjuvants and extra um, uh, contaminants, uh, other components that make the uh, actual product much more toxic than glyphosate by itself. Um, and they also said if higher levels appear safe, then you don't, need, you don't need to test lower levels. And with this quote, the dose makes the poison. And that turns out not to be true either because glyphosate is an endocrine disruptor and endocrine disruptors are often much more toxic at low doses than they are at higher doses. And then they said, you know, if you study for three months, you don't see any problems, then that you're good to go. And that's also not true because glyphosate is a slow kill. And so glyphosate is an endocrine disruptor. This has been finally figured out. And, and now there's uh, lots of papers coming out showing that that's, a, a, um, that that's true. Um, so a key thing is that glyphosate disrupts the gut microbiome. Um, EPSP synthase is the name of the enzyme that should make pathway that glyphosate disrupts. And they argue that's the main toxic effect. And certainly that will kill the weeds because it's so central to their uh, metabolism. And then we're safe because we don't have that enzyme, gut microbiome do, and they use this enzyme to synthesize those aromatic amino acids. And this study showed that, uh, that many of our microbes have this uh, vulnerable uh, enzyme. 54% of the species that they found in the human gut microbiome were sensitive to glyphosate. So here's your shikimate pathway. Shikimate goes to cores made in the, in the uh, bacteria. Uh, these aromatic amino acids, those are precursors to the neurotransmitters, dopamine, serotonin, melatonin, 
um, adrenaline and also to thyroid hormones. So all of these are going to be suppressed, uh, de deficient if these aren't being produced by the gut microbes. And I mentioned the vitamin K2 and also several B vitamins all come out of that coarse pathway and glyphosate blocks that. Um, so this was a very interesting paper back in 2014 where they found that they compared Roundup to glyphosate in terms of acute toxicity. And they said that in spite of the fact that Roundup was considered among the safest pesticides, it was by far the most toxic among all the herbicides and insecticides that they tested. And then they, they talked about this inconsistency between scientific fact and industrial claim that could be attributed to huge economic interests, which have been found to falsify health risk assessments and delay health policy decisions. Okay, so the main toxic effects, it kills beneficial gut bacteria, allows pathogens to overgrow. This induces inflammatory gut, leaky gut, all kinds of gut problems. It also binds very tightly to many minerals like cobalt and manganese and zinc, and it messes up the body's ability to transport them and deliver them to where they're needed for their activity, for, the, for activating uh, enzymes. So you end up with simultaneous toxicity and deficiency in some of these minerals. Uh, it also, is, of course, interferes with the synthesis of these aromatic amino acids and also with the synthesis of methionine, and that's the base of the sulfur amino acid system. So that also has many consequences, including reducing the supply of the critical antioxidant glutathione. And then it disrupts sulfate synthesis and sulfate transport. And that's been the area that I've been most interested in. My, in my, before glyphosate, I had a, I, I recognized sulfate deficiency as being a key component of autism.